Here's how to start an Amazon FBA business and make money online fast. And how I was able to make $100 to $700 every single day with no experience selling weird products online. And how you can copy and paste these nine simple steps to make your first $5,000 to $10,000 a month online with Amazon FBA. But first, you need to actually understand what Amazon FBA is. So I remember when I first got started with Amazon FBA, I just wanted to go ahead and create freedom for myself. And I didn't want to go ahead and deal with the shipping, the handling, the customer service. I just wanted to find a way to make passive income. My first goal was to make $100 a day with this so that I could go ahead and, for example, help my mom and dad, pay the bills, not have to worry about all the debt that I was in. And selling on Amazon is a good way for complete beginners to get started because essentially, Amazon does the shipping, the handling, the customer service. All you're essentially doing is testing products with a very low risk quantity. You then buy it in bulk from, for example, China or India, and then send it over to Amazon, where then Amazon will do literally all of the hard work. Now, if Amazon's gonna go ahead and do most of the hard work, you could see that actually the most important thing is to make sure that you pick your first product and do product market research effectively the right way so you do not lose any money. So how do you actually do product research? Well, it's very simple. First, you need to decide exactly what you wanna sell. So for example, if I wanna go ahead and sell these blue blockers, go ahead and help me with my sleep because my sleep freaking sucks. I'll go ahead and check what are the main competitors and what are they actually selling? Is it a very competitive niche to actually go ahead and get into? Because obviously, one of the worst mistakes that you could ever go ahead and do is get into a very competitive market where there's a lot of people already selling these sunglasses, meaning you wanna go ahead and get started with Amazon with the least amount of competition, with the least barrier of entry, with the least amount of risk so that you could actually go ahead and become profitable the first eight weeks, it's actually live on Amazon. So obviously how I go ahead and do it is just before I go ahead and do anything, I go ahead and check what are the competitors like? Are there thousands of reviews? If there's thousands of reviews, maybe it's something that I shouldn't get into. But you're probably wondering, well, Mike, then how do you actually think of ideas to go ahead and sell? Well, one place that I like doing is looking at the Amazon bestsellers and just seeing, okay, well, if these aren't the things that I actually want to go ahead and sell, what are other things that I could actually potentially sell? I could go ahead and do like, for example, something like pet supplies. I can literally go to pet supplies and see some of the best suppliers. And what I want to do is if I can find a best supplier or a best seller that's on here that doesn't have that much reviews, then that would be one idea to go ahead and get started with. Another way is just even checking out what's popular on eBay. What's popular on eBay that sells very well on eBay. eBay is just a marketplace kind of like Amazon. And if there's products that are successful on eBay, but yet not yet on Amazon, that's a huge potential to actually go ahead and make money. Actually, some of the most successful products that sell on Amazon were successful products that were selling on other platforms like eBay, Facebook ads, like Shopify stores. Sometimes the most important way to actually go out and make money is taking products that are doing well on one platform and then selling them on the other. So obviously you wanna go ahead and just check out well, what's already doing well on eBay. I can literally go ahead, type in something like jewelry and just like that you could be able to see that there's 9,000 watchers in all of these things that people are essentially looking for. So look at this, boho, multi-women, multi-lane chain, chain pendant necklace. Again, I'll literally just go ahead Pop that into, for example, Amazon and see if this is something that has a lot of reviews or little reviews. And you could see there's some that only have 128 reviews. It's literally on the first page. But I want to go and see if there's something that's very low competitiveness that I can literally go ahead and come in. If there's literally less than maybe, look at this, 13, only 13 reviews on here, right? Another place that I like looking for ideas is, for example, eBay, just seeing what's already trending on eBay. You got Pokemon cards, you got like all of these things, you have shoes, you have binoculars. So here's a very interesting thing. Vortex, optical, viper, roof, prism, binoculars. Let me go ahead and look what's on Amazon and just double check to see if this is literally what people are looking for. Look at this, 26 reviews. 26 reviews, it's on the first page, so you can see that there's literally people going ahead and selling certain things like this that are least competitive because you only see like 26 reviews at the top listing, even though they're running ads. Another one you could go ahead and also do is looking at the Amazon movers and shakers to see what has had the most movements in literally the past 24 hours that literally grew the fastest. Again, what you wanna go ahead and do in a lot of these places is just see where, or do like look at this, movers and shakers collectible coins. This grew the fastest and there's only three reviews. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and find certain things where it's like, okay, what is growing the fastest that has very little reviews? Because reviews are kind of like the name of the game in Amazon. And if you can't get 20 reviews or 30 reviews or 40 reviews, it's very hard to go against someone that has 37,000 freaking reviews. Okay. Just think about like how you buy on Amazon, right? You literally go ahead and buy 
buy on Amazon because you're like, oh my God, look at all these reviews. I want to go ahead and buy because there's so many stars next to this product. And you trust it because that's how Amazon works. Well, it's the exact same thing. Well, if you're going to go ahead and go into a product, you don't want to go ahead and go against something that has tens of thousands of views, right? Look at this. This one only had 22 reviews, right? So here's another example of things that you could also go ahead and get started with. And then obviously I want to go ahead and see if people are just naturally creating content about it. So if I type in blue blockers, blue blockers on Pinterest, Pinterest is another good place to go ahead and get ideas because if people are pinning things to their Pinterest accounts, then they know that they actually go ahead and like this boho jewelry. So you can see people are naturally searching for these. It allows you to go ahead and get more eyeballs to, for example, your Amazon listing. Another place that I like also looking at is, for example, AliExpress. I like looking at things and products that I want to go ahead and get into. The, a lot of drop shippers and Shopify drop shippers use AliExpress to go ahead and sell. But the beautiful thing about this, and right now everything's in Polish because I'm Poland because I'm trying to find like a wife. But you could literally sort everything by the amount of orders that it has been done. And if you could see some of these things literally had tens of thousands of items essentially sold, then you could go ahead and get started with that. If there's very little products or offers actually on Amazon, right? You could actually go ahead and make money. Look at this. This butterfly necklace has got 5,000 sold. So if I go ahead and type in on Amazon, butterfly necklace for women. Oh, do you see all these things that naturally pop up? These are things that people are naturally searching for. Look at this for Four reviews. This is four reviews on the first page. Okay, so that's freaking huge because people are literally searching on Amazon. Oh my God, I need to go ahead and get my girlfriend something special. They're getting, you know, some type of product or offer. And then look at this. This is four reviews, four reviews on the first page. This is insane. And I didn't even realize that this is something, this is just something that I'm literally doing with product research right in front of your eyes. Now, once you actually find a good idea to go ahead and, for example, pick a product research with this, with all the different methods that I've shown you, that's already existing on one platform and you just take it from that platform onto, for example, example, Amazon. You want to source a new product on Alibaba, AliExpress, eBay, or the dollar store. Literally start small. You want to go ahead and get some type of sample and minimum order quantity where you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on products, but you know, literally for a couple hundred bucks, you could just get a small amount of products in bulk. You could go ahead and want to go ahead and sell on, for example, Amazon. Say you want to go ahead and sell some of these. You're not going to go ahead and buy tens of thousands of units of this. If you don't know, you can even sell one, right? So before I do anything, one of the things that I like doing is I like going to Alibaba. I'll type in something like blue blockers, blue blocking glasses, right? If this is the aspect that I essentially wanted to go ahead and sell, right? I would go ahead and order one. I would order one, ship it to my house, see what it would actually look like. Maybe take pictures of it. Maybe start using it as marketing material so that before I even go ahead and launch on Amazon, I could see if I could actually get some traction. And then instead of actually buying tens of thousands, I just want to see if I could actually go ahead and get eyeballs and make this product look good. And even if this is like a high quality, right? So I'll literally order some samples from these places, test the quality, see if it's good. And if the quality is good, I'll literally buy, you know, 20 units, 50 units, hundred units, something very, very small, not thousands of dollars. Just, I want to go ahead and see if I could actually make money with this. Start small and then scale from there. Step number four is you want to take pictures of the samples and use mid journey to create beautiful Amazon photos. So you can literally go ahead and start taking pictures with even just something as simple as like your iPhone. Literally go ahead and take a picture of this, have like some white background, put it up on, for example, the internet, but before you actually go ahead and do it, right? One thing that you can do is go to like, for example, mid journey, which is uh, this AI robot thing that could essentially make your products and images way better. Like if I literally go ahead and move my face and go to something like imagine, if I imagine something like uh, a blue blocking glasses that looks like, and then insert link to picture, can you make four variations? for my Amazon product picture. Literally just go ahead and typing in something like that you're going to go ahead and get something like this where they're going to go ahead and create a bunch of different variations of images for you that AI is generated that you could go ahead and essentially use for, for example, Amazon photography. This literally looks like a really cool image that you could go ahead and throw up on, for example, Amazon, right? In other places, if you really want to, you can even go to, for example, upwork.com, hire Amazon photography from the Philippines. They charge literally very, very cheap, $13 an hour, $20 an hour. They can make these graphic designs for you for, for example, Amazon, very, very fast and cheap and affordable. And before you know, it, you literally have like pictures of your products you want to go ahead and essentially sell on Amazon. Now, the next thing you want to go ahead and do is you want to go ahead and optimize your listing for keywords that people are essentially searching for. So how do you go ahead and actually do that? Well, this is exactly how you want to go ahead and find out what keywords are essentially people are looking for, right? So if I'm going to go ahead and come into here and I realize that I want to go ahead and sell blue blocking glasses, right? I'll literally go ahead and type in blue blocking glasses. And do you see all these things that pop up? These are things that I essentially want 
in my listing because if people are searching for it and be like, oh my God, I wanna go ahead and buy some type of blue blockers. They're literally typing on, for example, Amazon. And when they're typing on Amazon, these things pop up. These are essentially what people are searching for. So just imagine this, thousands of eyeballs every single day, every single month are searching for these things. So obviously, if people are searching for this, you probably should put it in the headline and in the description and in the bio and just all over the place, right? For example, say these are the things that I wanna essentially go ahead and go to, right? I wanna see that, okay, these are the people that are essentially looking for this. You see that they use the words blue light, blocking glasses, lightweight eyeglasses frame, blue, gray, computer, game, glasses, cool. So it's all of those things, right? Now, obviously, you want to, you don't wanna go ahead and compete against them, but what you can compete against is seeing what people complain about. Because if you go to their negative reviews and you see what they actually do not like about it, you could turn some of the customers that essentially use all of these words and are essentially telling you what they don't like about the top product, and you could essentially create a product and a new listing just like this, but it's literally calling out the pain points that all of these customers had on the previous product that it is that they search for. Does it make sense? Like for example, if I go ahead and sell anything online and I realize that someone's saying, oh, I wish I wish this was a different color. I wish this, these were blue glasses, or I wish these looked like welder glasses, or I wish they were just kind of like square. The look in my face, it just doesn't look right with circles. I just wish it was squares. I see people complaining multiple, multiple, multiple times in the reviews. I'm just gonna be like, well, dude, I'm not gonna go ahead and reinvent the wheel. There's people telling me that I wanna go ahead and buy something. Might as well just go ahead and create it and have that be my unique selling product position, right? So again, if I see that these are the blue blocking glasses and it's gamers, all of these things, I would put this in the headlines, a lot of it in like the descriptions, because these are how people are essentially finding you. And then once you actually have that, you want to go ahead and just go to Amazon Seller Central and you could go ahead and input that image on, for example, Amazon Seller Central. Now you have like an Amazon lift thing that you could essentially get started for right now. And after that, you wanna go ahead and optimize the headline, which I've shown you. You wanna go ahead and make sure that you put as many keywords in a way that's not freaking obvious in the headline. You can see they have like blue blocking glasses. So this is one keyword, right? If I type in blue blocking, blue light blocking glasses, and I put that in there, put that into search. You see for men, for kids, fit over prescription glasses, even something like fit over prescription glasses, that was like the pain point that I had because I was freaking blind as hell. And when I wanted to watch Netflix, I wanted to watch it with my glasses, but there was no blue blockers that could actually go over my main glasses. Does that make sense? And I would see what other things that people are essentially using for like computer game glasses. Again, copy paste that. Throw that up on, for example, Amazon. See what else people are essentially searching for. Look at this. Blue light blocking three pack computer game glasses. There's another idea, right? Again, very high competition. But you could see that you could literally just start typing things in. And if there's some type of keyword that doesn't have that much reviews, you can literally go in and come in and compete against them. Does that make sense? Another thing is you also wanna optimize the description. So again, a lot of these keywords, you wanna go ahead and make sure that a lot of the keywords that you're essentially seeing people looking for, you wanna put it in here. Like what are the keywords that this person essentially uses? So computer glasses is in here, right? Again, you see like, for example, a computer glasses, again, for kids and adults, okay? Like they are literally littering this entire place with just keywords that you could go ahead and essentially use. And obviously if you don't wanna pay the fee to make money or manage inventory, or you don't wanna go ahead and pay this, for example, annoying $39 a month to actually just make money. If your just goal is just freedom without having to worry about inventory. I I get it, I get it, I get it. Oh, Mike, this is kind of like very complicated. Is there a simple way to actually get started to just at least make three grand to maybe 10 grand a month where I actually don't need inventory, where I don't need to spend $39 a month on freaking Amazon Seller Central? Well, I'm glad you asked because we have this thing called the brand new silver lining method where there are normal ordinary people making three grand to 10 grand a month without actually having any inventory, without having any products, without having to do any of the hard stuff or investing $39 a month in, for example, Amazon Seller Central. What they do is they partner with big businesses that essentially take all of the risk. They do all of the hard stuff. They spend all of the money on the advertising and all of this stuff and they literally pay you huge commissions with very little risk to you. And this is without having your own product. This is without having your own offer. You don't need to have any special skills. If you wanna know exactly how people are doing this and making the first three grand to 10 grand a month online in eight weeks and sign up for this week's free workshop below, or go to mikefasile.com forward slash free workshop. Then after you go ahead and do that, you wanna go to make sure you add the image with the keyword as the file when you upload it on Amazon to rank for products easier, right? So it's like when you go ahead and realize what main keyword that you wanna go ahead and do, right? When you go ahead and get your images from, for example, Mid Journey or for example, Upwork, you wanna go ahead and make sure that, say, if this is the thing that you wanna go for, blue light blocking clips on glasses, when you actually save your file and before you actually upload it on Amazon, you wanna make sure that it is saved in the file kinda like this, .png. Because this title is literally on the image on, for example, Amazon, and when you go ahead and upload it on Amazon, you literally give Amazon's 
algorithm, a bunch of different metrics to essentially say that, okay, this is essentially the keyword that I wanna rank for. And at the end of the day, remember, the goal is to rank for a keyword because when you rank for a keyword and there's thousands of people looking for random products online that they wanna go ahead and buy, you're literally putting yourself in front of people that are already looking for these products where you could essentially make passive income. Now the seventh step is begging your family to buy the products and get your first 20 to 30 reviews. Uh, this is probably the most interesting part that I had. The first 20 or 30 reviews that I needed to make because I was in no one and you have zero reviews on, for example, freaking Amazon. No one wants to go out and buy from you because you should have no proof. So I literally had to beg and borrow 20 to 30 reviews from all of my friends and family. I was talking to my ex-girlfriends, mom and their dad, my neighbors, my friends, my friend's parents, my family family members, my aunties, my uncles, and you start realizing who are the people about it and who are the people that just buy your product and actually don't want to review it because they don't actually want you to freaking succeed. There are people that I was so close to that it literally bought the product, but they just wouldn't want to leave me a review because I guess they wanted to see me fail. But it was very interesting because I was able to manage to get to 20 or 30 reviews and finally was able to start making sales because now I had some type of credibility. People actually bought it, so Amazon really likes it. You start naturally getting sales and because you did your product research right, because you looked at this entire video, you were able to go ahead and make money. The eighth step is crazy. YouTube videos to send traffic to your Amazon listing. So again, if I go ahead and type in a best blue blockers, best blue blocking glasses for gaming, for Amazon, for computer, uh, all of these things for sleep, I'm gonna start making videos about all of these things on YouTube to essentially take the traffic from YouTube and the eyeballs from YouTube and it's just essentially sending it to my Amazon product. The reason why is because when you don't essentially have traffic from Amazon, you need to go out and create your traffic elsewhere. I would also create a Pinterest account and start creating pins of the best blue blocking, light glasses on Amazon for kids. I would create a bunch of pins and throw it up there and link it to, for example, my Amazon account. So now I have Pinterest and YouTube coming over to my Amazon listing. And when you start getting more traffic, obviously Amazon loves that because they're like, wow, you're literally bringing traffic. I love you, Mike. And Amazon sounds like, oh my God, thank you, Amazon. You're now finally giving me traffic. And Amazon's like, well, you know, it's because you were such a good boy and you gave us traffic when we needed it the most. And now we're going to reward you with a bunch of passive income. And the ninth step is obviously knowing when to actually go ahead and buy inventory again. You know, the thing about Amazon is once you actually start ranking, you want to keep on ranking. You don't want to go, don't just have a bunch of sales and having all of the money come in and then out of nowhere, you literally lose stock because you were just making too much money because you're watching all of Mike Vasile videos. Then now you have to go ahead and wait and because you don't have any inventory, Amazon's gonna be like, screw you, man. You can't go ahead and, for example, sell anymore because we, we're not gonna make money if you don't have any products. So they're gonna start bringing you down in terms of rankings. I'm telling you, rankings on Amazon is literally everything. It's how you go ahead and make money. So when you are starting to get less and less inventory, you need to make sure that you go ahead and click buy, get more of the products in China, ship it over into Amazon in time so you do not waste a single day to make a sale. 